Are you alone all the time filming yourself and you wish you could just walk around and the camera follows you, but you got nobody to move the camera? Well, nobody's moving this camera, it's moving itself. Today we're going to cover all kinds of self-tracking cameras that are around 2023 that range in price from $29 to $2,000. This is going to be one fun video, so come on, follow me. Two years ago, when I made my first video on tracking cameras, the selection was kind of limited and they were kind of frustrating to use. Now, a few years later, technology is more advanced and more accessible, and I'm the first one on the ball to try these things because I love things that track you automatically so I don't have to get poor carrot if, hey, I need you to film me again, I need you to follow me around, and that's what these things do. They recognize a face and they automatically follow you around wherever you go. So this is really exciting. I have been putting these together for the last year. This has been a big research project and I'm very excited to bring this to you today. So a lot of these, even though it's made for a smartphone, you can actually stick a action cam on there. And in some cases, if the thing is strong enough, it can even take a pocket camera like an RX100, which is my favorite vlogging camera. Most of the videos I ever make for this channel are made with this little pocket camera. Even though I have big, heavy cameras, this is the most fun one to just literally put in my pocket, take to the location, whip it out, and start filming. So if I can stick this camera on some of these little guys, then I'm gonna do it. If it's too heavy, I'm gonna switch to a, an action cam like an Osmo 3, which is about the same weight as one of the bigger cell phones. And a few of these can actually take DSLR style cameras. We'll get to that in a minute too. Or even a little camcorder. Some of them are webcams that track you around, but that doesn't stop me. I'm gonna just take my laptop out to the location. I spent the money so you don't have to and I'm not afraid to tell you what I like and don't like you know that so let's get going because I'm just as excited about this as I hope you are so let's not gab anymore let's just get right to it now obviously my experimenting mind like yours is going to go into the area of security cameras because they track people and they're getting better quality so I thought well let me try those let me see what they're like so real link is one of the leaders in security cameras so I got some it's not YouTube quality it's like 12 frames per second so it's really jerky motion but the biggest problem with these is they require internet and a router and some special box that they record into. It's just too much. It's not. This is no. no. So yes, I'm going to give these away. All right. First up, we start with this little guy here. It's a Telesyn. It's $49 on Amazon. I like this little guy. He's so cute. It's meant for smartphones. There's no communication between the smartphone and this thing. It just can only handle the weight of a smartphone. What I do is obviously I take this off. Since it has a quarter 20 thread and an action cam weighs about the same as a cell phone, you can stick that on there. No problem. And this can totally handle it. Now, I... I you know me, I like to see how far I can push things. First thing I did, of course, was put a ball head on there with my favorite RX100. This is quite a heavy camera. Let's see if it can handle it. So let's go out in the middle of nowhere in the desert and start testing these things. Okay, so here we are outside in the beautiful desert. I'm going to turn on my recording camera. Now I turn on a little Telesyn and I have a little remote here. And I'm going to push the remote and it's going to start face tracking right away. So look at that, it's turning. It's just, I just turn it on, start face tracking, and it starts tracking. So let's see how it can track. Notice how it was jerking. The camera on top was a little too heavy for the motors to handle. The motor starts to turn, but it just can't get it going. And then finally, when it gets some power, it jerks. So I need a lighter, more lightweight camera. So I have an Osmo Action 3 on here, a little action cam. This should move a lot more smoother. Let's, let's try this out here. Because it's a more lightweight camera. So it should move a lot smoother, which I think it is. So this is more for action cams and light cell phones. But I like this little guy. He's so cute, a little tiny thing. You literally fit this in your pocket. So this is the whole thing right here. This is the, the yeah, that's the camera, that's the tracker. This is very portable and it works pretty good. I mean, if you just want to do a little talk out in the middle of nowhere, you're wearing your little action cam and your little tracker, the little Telesyn is great for that. All right, on to the next thing. I could use a normal light stand, but I wanted to have something, a thing that has a flat area on top because a normal light stand, if you look at it, it's kind of thin on top like this. So, but I wanted a big wider base. So these things have a nice flat table kind of supporting it. So I got one of these little 
carbon fiber extension rods. So now I've got a nice flat base. It's just more supportive so it doesn't wobble as much. All right, this is the WeGuard AI tracker. It's made for cell phones. You're supposed to stick your cell phone in there. It's just like a slot for a flat cell phone. But I don't want to use cell phones. I want to use real cameras. So I made this little gadget here. It's just a flat little thing that I attached a uh, uh, attachment to, whatever you call it, the with a thread on it. So I just put that in there. It slides in really nice. Tighten it in and we're ready to go. So this is how I can attach a normal camera now to something that was designed for a cell phone. Ready to go. All right, so here we have the WeGuard and I'm going to turn on my camera. Hello camera. Now I just push the button here. I am your voice assistant. <laughs> And it just, it just automatically starts. I just push the on button and look at this. I walk back and forth and it starts tracking. So let's see. Now, most of these cheap ones, they don't go very far, but yeah, see, it didn't do it. So you have to keep your face in the shot for it to work. Here, here I am. Okay, so, so I could walk back and forth like this and talk and talk. But the moment I start going off in the distance or I turn my head, it gets kind of iffy. And if you get too small, yeah, see that one's having some problems. But if you stay close, like within a good distance, it needs to recognize a face, it'll work. I think this one's a little stronger than the Telesyn because it's a little bigger, so I assume it's a little stronger. Uh, as far as holding a heavier camera, I wouldn't go anything over a pocket camera like an RX100 with these things. All right, watch. I'm gonna, probably going to talk. Power off. Power off. All right, this is the Yongnuo YN360G. I know that because it says it on the front. <laughs> I took off the cell phone holder on the top. It has a quarter 20 thread, which is great. And then I put a ball mount here and my pocket camera. So I'm gonna push record and turn on the button on the Yongnuo. The green light goes on and it starts tracking. So it's a nice little presentation there. I like, like the packaging, it looks good. And uh, Is it following me? Yep, it's following me. And, you know, I try to use a, one of like an RX pocket camera whenever I can instead of an action cam because it's just better quality. It's a one inch sensor and it's my favorite vlogging camera. So if they are too, if the camera is too heavy, if it's too much weight, then I use an action cam like an Osmo action. But uh, this thing looks like it's working pretty good. Let's go back here. Still doing it? Lost me, huh? All right, Young Nuo is good. The YN360G. All right, this is the i2o by Lime Namics. It's made for a cell phone, but I don't use cell phones, so I'm gonna click this up like this, turn it up, and spread it out. Now, I could put a, a action cam in here easily, but I'm gonna put a uh, see if I can get away with uh, my favorite vlogging camera, my RX100. Okay, so I push record on the camera and on on this thing, and that's it. It just starts tracking. So it looks like it can handle an RX100 pocket camera, and let's see how far we can go. Okay, that didn't catch that one. All right, so if you get too far, you turn your head, then it's going to uh, not work. But it's a nice little package for if you're like just talking like this, walking back and forth. And it looks like it's pretty smooth. Can't go up or down, obviously, because it's just left and right, but. So yeah, so here I am talking. And then I can just back up and just, you just move within basically 10 feet, which is like three meters. 
left and right. All right, so that's the I2O by Lime Namics. All right, this is the Pivo Max. This thing has to use a cell phone because it uses the phone's face recognition to do its thing. So you can't use this with other cameras. So I stick it in there. You have to use the Pivo app, but it works really good. It puts a ring around your face. I push record on here. Two, one, record. And it just starts doing its thing. Now, this looks like a really good app actually. The only thing is it can't go up or down so it's kind of limited to what you're, you have to have your face in the shot somehow. But the cool thing is notice it's zooming in as I go back. Now I do believe it's just cropping in so it gets like a lower resolution the more it crops in and then I come closer it starts zooming out. That's pretty cool. So it does a pretty good job. It's just, it won't go up or down, so it's only panning. But I really like how responsive it is and how it zooms in and out. So if you wanna use a cell phone, only a cell phone, then this is a pretty good one. But it doesn't pan tilt. This is the Pivo Max. And here's my little minion. I painted him black. He's still got the one eye. <laughs> Cute, isn't he? All right, this is made for cell phones. This is a uh, Obsbot ME. Me. And it's me. Uh, you know me. I don't want to use cell phones. I want to use a real camera. So I am going to use this thing. And you can't fit a RX100 in here, it's too, it's too tight. So I'm gonna use an action cam. And that thing fits in here pretty well. All right, so now I push the on button on this thing. The light went on. All right, so now, this is one of those ones where you have to activate it with a hand gesture. There, now it starts tracking. All right. And let's see what it does. So Obspot is pretty good, so it should be tracking me pretty good. Yeah, even when I'm further away, it does pretty good. Hi there. I'm gonna go behind something. Still got me. I'm gonna go further away. This is further than any other camera I've gone with to this point. And it's still tracking me. That's pretty good. This is the Obsbot ME. I wonder if I can fit an RX on there. Let me try. Okay. I created this silly thing here. It's a little cheap, little lightweight um, quick release that I hot glued to some foam core. <laughs> so I'm going to stick that in here. Yeah. So see, now that holds. And now I stick the camera to that, the quick release plate. It's looking at me like, what are you doing? <laughs> All right, so let's put that on there. A quick release plate. Oh, it's holding. All right. There's always a way. Push record and let's see. Let's see if it works. Looks like it's working. Wow. I'm going to go way back here. This is further away than I've gone with any other camera. And it's still tracking me. Wow, that's pretty good. Hey there, how are you? I'm fine. It's still tracking me? All right, well, pretty pretty good, amazing performance on this little thing. The Obsbot ME, little minion. <laughs> and I put a pretty good sized camera. Look at the look at the weight of this camera. That's this little thing is moving. 
Okay, this is the OBSBOT Tiny 4K. This is the original one that came out a year ago. And this is a webcam. This is not a self-contained camera, so you have to run it to a, a laptop if you're on location with a USB-C cable. So I plug that into here and watch this right here. It's going to wake up in a second. Yep, it's going to get the signal from the camera, from the, uh, from the laptop. It's going to wake up. Good morning. All right, and then I go down here and I open up the OBSBOT app. No, this does not work on cell phones at this time. I think they hopefully will at some point. All right, it's tracking now. There we go. So I'm recording to a webcam to a laptop out in the middle of the desert. And uh, this is the earlier version. It's got a slightly smaller sensor. Uh, it doesn't have all the features of the new one, which I'm going to show you in a second, but I just wanted to show you what the quality is. And it tracks pretty good. So here I am filming you in the desert from a webcam. Anyway, this is the OBSBOT Tiny 4K. Let's move on to the next one. All right, this is the OBSBOT Tiny 2 4K. This is the new one, it just came out and I'm going to plug in the little USB cable in the back. It's gonna wake up here after it realizes there's some power coming from the laptop. There it is, good morning, how are you doing? All right, so now I go to the OBSBOT the app here. I'm going to bring up the uh, screen here. So here it is on the screen. The video quality is amazing for this little thing. It has a larger sensor. But I do notice the sky can have banding sometimes. I hope they fix that. And the video files are saved in an MKV format, which has to be converted before you can use it in an editing program. But look at the quality, pretty amazing. The app is really good. You can set uh, different, uh, you can do like here, uh, you can set upper body to, to track. So watch this, it'll zoom in to upper body. I go back a little bit more, it zooms into upper body. It just keeps me in upper body pretty much the whole time. So let's see what this is like right out of the box, automatic. I have a feeling it's gonna be pretty good because OBSBOT is really trustworthy as far as tracking you and doing good quality stuff. And the motion should probably be pretty smooth. And it's a real pan tilt so you can go up and down that's really cool. This is a real pan tilt head and it's the size of an ice cube. This thing is so cool. I mean, this is really, really small and the quality is really good. The app is really good. So I haven't seen the footage yet, but I assume it's pretty good. This is 1080 30. Let's switch to 4K. You can change the tracking here. For example, you can go upper body. So now it zooms in to just keep this part of my body in. So I can back up and it, it zooms in. I can back up some more and it just keeps that part of me in the shot. No, this does not have a cell phone app yet, but it's pretty cool. I mean, it's tiny, sorry as tiny goes. It's truly a tiny. All right, coming in at the same size as the OBSBOT Tiny 2 is the Fiotech Pocket 3. Even though this is 4K and it's the same size and it looks pretty cool, this thing is so much more frustrating than the other one. I hate this one. For this one, you need uh, an app on your phone, which is not that big of a deal, but getting it to hook up and work is really ridiculous. This thing is so complicated to use. It has a card you can record into, by the way, which is really good. You don't need to hook this up to anything, but there's three different buttons you have to push. All right, it picked me up and I push record. I assume it's recording. Yes, there's a counter. All right, so here I am out here. It, I got it working, it's a miracle. It took me forever to figure this out. Um, but tiny little thing, it's already lost me. I haven't even walked six feet away. It's already lost me. Uh, <clears throat> hey. All right, it's got, this, it's got the square around my head so it recognizes me. So I gotta move pretty slow. I'm literally only like three feet from the camera. And it's having problems tracking me. Look at this. <laughs> I barely moved, it's not even tracking me. So, hello. Hey, I hate this thing. Let's move on. 
All right, let's get back to Ozbot. Ozbot's probably the best. As Ozbots go, this is the best of the best. This is the Ozbot tail. They temporarily stopped making it because they said they have a chip shortage. I hope they can continue production because this is so amazing. This is not a webcam. This is a self-contained camera. It has a built-in mi micro SD card in there. It has a 4 to 14 zoom lens. It can record 1080, 30, and 60, 2.7, 30, and 60, and 4K. And it does 100. 20 frame per second slow motion and 1080p. This is Olog, so you have more dynamic range. This thing is great. Not only does it track you really fast, but it goes left and right, but it also can go down and up because it's a real pan tilt head. This thing is amazing and it really, really tracks you really well. This thing has true AI. I mean, I can be way back here. I can go all over the place and it follows me, no problem. That's pretty good. I mean, I'm moving fast. This is great. I'm way back here. I love this thing. Now, they, they, they don't sell it right now. Even on eBay, these things cost $1,000 still. That's why, because they're so good. This is just 1080 60 right now. And this is 2.7K 60P. So this is 2.7K 60P on the Osbot tail. What does this look like? I don't know, I can't tell because I haven't seen it yet. All right, this is 4K 60. I turned off the tracking, so now it's just a normal fixed camera. And I can move and it doesn't do anything. So this is 4K 60, this is what it looks like. And if I want to start the tracking, I hold my hand up and I go, hey there, how you doing? And now it starts tracking. How cool is that? So this is 4K 60. This is amazing. If you can find one of these, I got this one on eBay. They're out there and I hope that, if we all write Obsbot and say, please make another one of these. All right, this is the Soonfo M6. This is a really fancy one, and you can tell by looking at it. This looks like a real pan tilt machine. It even comes with a really good uh, plate that you, like a heavy duty plate. You can put SLR uh, style, DSLR style uh, full frame cameras on there. And you know, you, you can slide this back. This is like really, a really professional setup. And you would think that this thing pans and tilts mechanically. Well, it does, but, all right, let me just show you here. So basically, you've got a remote here, and the remote's actually kind of cool. Turn on the remote, turn on this thing to remote. So, oh, I guess I should turn the camera on too. Uh, duh. My head's a little high in the picture, so I push this remote and it makes the tilt go up and down. And then when I have the tilt correct, then I push it down to tracking here and it just starts tracking. There we go. You would think the pan and the tilt are both tracking, but it doesn't. It's just the panning that's tracking and the tilt is, uh, yeah, see it's not even following me here, so it's not that smart. You got to keep your face in the shot and you can't be over 10 feet away, but <clears throat> and you and once you set it to tracking, this doesn't you can't do this anymore to make that go up and down. So it kind of just locks it in place. So it's kind of silly. I mean, you might as well manually just do that. So let's see how it's working here. Yeah, it doesn't it loses you pretty easily. There. So it looks really impressive. And it can take full frame cameras, which is good, but you can't go that far away. You can't turn your head, you can't go behind objects, but you can do full frame cameras. Anyway, so. So this is the Soonfo M6.
All right, coming in at $2,000. This is the PTZ Optics Move 4K. I'm powering it with a little V-mount battery here, and I have a Ninja that it's recording into via HDMI. It has all kinds of outputs, HDMI, SDI, Ethernet. You can adjust the exposure, the frame rate. You can do aperture priority, shutter priority, manual exposure. You can adjust the HDR levels on this. Uh, it shoots 4K, 30, 2.7K, 1080. Uh, I just turned it on and it just started tracking. There's really nothing you have to do to start it tracking. You just have to be in the shot for it to start tracking. I think it's on shutter priority right now. So it seems to be sharper on shutter priority and blurrier on aperture priority for some reason. I don't know why. But you can manually adjust everything. It's meant for following speakers that are giving presentations in lecture halls, you know, with the whiteboard and stuff. But I wanted to see, you know, I mean, I'm outside all the time. So I wanted to see what it's like to take something that's meant for indoors in a lecture hall and take it outside in the sunlight. Because you can adjust the uh, exposure and everything. So I think it does pretty good. And the other cool thing about this camera, this PTZ camera, you know what PTZ stands for? Pan, tilt, zoom. So this one actually tilts. That's right, it can look down. Yeah, it's good quality, kind of professional stuff. It's pretty cool. But is it worth $2,000? You know, you know, this is meant for lecture halls, churches, things like that, so they can afford that stuff. But a typical YouTube person, you know, and they try to keep it under a thousand dollars, probably. So that's where you go into the uh, the Obspot territory. Plus, this thing isn't really portable. I mean, you have to have a V-mount battery, a Ninja, or an external recorder. Uh, it's it's a it's not very small and portable. This is more of a professional thing. But I wanted to show you different options. How's it doing? It's doing okay. La 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 la. To do be do be do be do. Hi there. All right, everything I've showed you so far requires a face for face tracking to do their job. But I'm gonna show you something right now that I showed you in the last video where I did tracking videos, because this thing doesn't require any uh, face to track. It requires a thing I hold in my hand, and this can actually track something the size of a football field. It's made for sports, for people riding horses, so this thing is pretty darn cool. What you have to do is you have to put three sensors. If you can see over here in this bush over here, I have a sensor in that bush. And then I have another sensor about a thousand feet back. Come on over here. You see that cactus way back there? Way back there, that cactus sticking out. There's a sensor in that. And there's a third sensor up there in that bush over there. I don't know if you can see it. Those are three sensors they're going to use for triangulating this object here. So wherever this object is, this thing is going to follow me. Here we go. I have an RX100 on there. That's about the maximum amount of weight that it can handle. It's a little bit over the weight limit, but let's see what it can do. All right, here we go. I'm going to really run. Is it tracking me? I'm behind the bush. Can you see me? Nope. All right, I'm going to go way back here. I'm behind the bush. Can you see me? Nope. All right, I'm going to go way back. I want you to see me with your camera. Okay. This is where the uh, the, the second uh, unit is. I'm way back there. And this thing is tracking me. So, I mean, I could go, this is made for horseback riding, so you can go a long ways with this thing. And I can hide behind stuff. I can run. <sighs> and it's tracking me. This is great. The only thing is it can't go up or down and it can't zoom which is which sucks but look at this there's no face so <laughs> i love this thing this is pixio they changed the name to move and see it's the same thing b and h sells it it's not cheap it's a thousand dollars 
but it's pretty darn dependable for when you're doing stuff where you're, the face is never going to be seen all the time. So this is pretty darn good. I love this thing. I love the name Pixio. It's so cute. <laughs> so there you go. I just got an exercise routine going there. It does go wobbly back and forth a little bit, but uh, that's because I'm moving my hand. <laughs> it's not because this thing is not doing its job. It's because I got to remember, oh, I got to, you know what, I should clip it in, I should put it in my pocket or clip it on or, because when I, we move, when I move my hand like this, it's, it's following it, but, uh, yeah. Pretty darn good. I thought I'd throw that in there. All right, so that's uh, for stuff outside. Let's go back in the studio. All right, this is the Edelkron Head 1 Plus Vision Module. It took me literally an hour and a half to get this thing to work. It wouldn't let you do anything until you download the firmware, which took half an hour. It's the slowest loading firmware I have ever experienced in my life. Then you had to get a Wi-Fi signal to hook up to both the head module and the, the vision module, and they wouldn't talk to each other. Uh, the local Wi-Fi signal from this wouldn't work, so I had to use the one from the house. That took another 45 minutes to get that to work getting this to talk to that to talk to this is just ridiculous it is the most uh i don't care how impressive this looks i don't care if it has full frame on it or anything look at this i'm walking off the frame it doesn't even follow you that well like what's the use uh. you gotta walk really slow for this thing to follow you. Really slow. $1,500 for this nightmare. For ease of use, I give it a zero. For user friendliness, I give it a minus 10. I am definitely getting rid of this. All right, I'm back outside to sum all this up when using the Obsbot ME with an RX on top. Which one's my favorite one? Well, it depends. It's like asking somebody which child they like the most. I like them all for different reasons. I like the little Telesyn because it's really tiny. I've, I'm endeared to it. I've had it for a while. I can put my little action cam on there. I like this one because I can use my RX on there. I like the Pixio because I can work the size of a football field, never have to show my face, and it works really perfectly. That's really nice. But really, when it comes down to tracking cameras and face tracking and all that, I like something that's really small, really portable, lightweight, that you can fit in your pocket, that you just have one button. You push it, it turns on, it starts tracking, and it's that easy. And it records internally to a micro SD card, and that's it. That's like the that's all I want, you know, and like no external recorders, no external batteries, no laptops, no apps, no phones, no nothing. Oh, this is a tracking video, isn't it? I should be like walking while I'm talking. All right, well, I hope you got something out of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh uh, come back again for more entertainment and uh, educational uh, something and uh, we'll talk again. I'm sure I'll have something else to talk about. That's really interesting that, you know, we can just talk about forever and there's no, you know, I don't know what to say. I mean, I just, I'll just talk, you listen. And